The pilot was a real opportunity, I guess, um, for us to get some advice, get some support, and, and begin to think how we might change how we've been seen. One of the challenges we had at the time was that we were seen very much as a provider. We weren't seen as a strategic leader. We weren't seen as a, maybe a service who could influence and shape, really, um, how we tackle the priorities of the local authority around health, around education, around economic development. And there was a lot of sort of um, initial need to sort of think about it and sort of um, be honest with ourselves that maybe things needed to change. It's, it's attitudinal change, it's a cultural change um, and you need to continue to work at it. It's early days in terms of the partnership but it's making those connections. The priorities and which is for, for the County Council would be to tackle um, heart um, conditions. Stroke's a big problem for the people of County Durham. Smoking is another big thing. Um, again, they're the three biggest killers within County Durham um, and they're the big uh, key priorities for us as the Health and Wellbeing Board. One of the key things we needed to do was maybe have a shared understanding of what we wanted to put right. And where we chose to focus was tackling physical inactivity. You know, ultimately it's a key challenge for County Durham. All of our internal colleagues and partners accepted that. And what we needed to do was focus on that, but together. So I think when we first met as a group, perhaps some of us struggled to understand why there were so many different disciplines around the table. But I think quickly we realised it was really important to have all the different representation there. Certainly from a health point of view, uh, so there was myself representing GPs and CCGs. Uh, there was a public health consultant and there was a hospital consultant. The things that we brought to the group, I don't think they would have got if we hadn't been there. But even more importantly, uh, even though we knew about the health and the statistics, we would not have had you know, any idea of the uh, extent of the infrastructure, the support services, the activities that are already going on, uh, you know, and, and how to find out this information. So I think it really, really, it, you know, it was, it was clear early on that we needed everyone around the table. This was set up as a leaders group and this, that was a really interesting way in for us because one of the difficulties we have with partnership working is we've, we've got to spend quite a lot of time working out where we're all coming from and what we're going to get from the partnership and what we're going to bring to it. The same is true of the leaders group but what it has done is it's enabled key people in the county to come together with, with a degree of autonomy and decision-making um, responsibility and to have honest conversations about what we're doing, why we're doing it, what motivates us and what we can bring into it and what we need from it in order to make what we're doing at our grassroots work, work better. And we've been able to go back to our, um, our own organisations and our own uh, people with some, some clear ideas about what actions can be taken. We wanted everybody to be going in the same direction. And to me, the framework, we couldn't get people on board with this without having that outcomes framework that gives them clarity about what we're trying to do and what their contribution is. One of the key things that happened was um, from our earlier conversations that the expert advisor had with our internal colleagues and politicians, we realised that we needed to not plan on our own and be part of other people's worlds. And we were invited to have the keynote speech at a big tent day, which was a very local way of engaging with a wide range of partners, but led by our health and social care colleagues. And that was really important because for the first time, we'd got physical inactivity on their agenda and in a very high profile way. And we were very fortunate to have the time of Dr. William Bird. And he essentially helped deliver a doctor's message to other doctors, other very key people like chief executives of key organisations. And that's sometimes um, so important because he could say it in a way that we couldn't really. And he had such powerful stats, powerful evidence base, which particularly for health and social care sort of colleagues is incredibly important. They, they build their services on evidence and it was really important that we understood that we weren't going to be able to work with them unless we understood that evidence base. That contact with someone who's got more experience and has got the evidence to back it up, you know, GP's probably quite sceptical uh, of a lot of things, but if you can back it up with evidence and science and say, well, actually, this is the, eff this is the effect that you might have, then I think that's, that's easier. And I think actually hearing that from another GP was also a big benefit as well. So I think probably as a result of that day, 
uh, we've got more of our GPs recommending physical activity, signposting patients to physical activity on a regular basis. When the uh, Active Durham Partnership first came together, it was very much focusing on purely physical activity outcomes. We were very keen to broaden those outcomes and that uh, broader perspective. Um, if I take the example of childhood obesity figures, uh, we were very keen to see that within the outcomes framework, we could look at ways of monitoring um, the changes in childhood obesity at reception age for children and also at year six, because it's not only about what uh, children are eating, it's absolutely their levels of activity within the context of families as well as settings such as, as schools. So those conversations evolved over time and I think through a lot of listening and sharing of understanding, we've got to a, a healthy point now where childhood obesity is represented, as well as mental well-being as well, because we know of the impacts that activity can have on improving uh, mental health. There's been a long history and there is in a lot of uh, local authority areas of people working in silos. So it was an opportunity to come out of the silos and, and just look at where we had synergy, particularly between public health, sports and culture, the voluntary sector. And, and economic development as well. Making sure you're open to different people's perspectives on something and recognising that how you sometimes see things is not how others do. So you've got to be willing to have those open conversations. From my side, we're interested in um, sustainable travel, active travel, walking, cycling. We've got to deal with congestion on the roads. We've got to deal with air pollution. We've got all of these things, sort of if we can get people out of their cars, and walking, cycling, using public transport um, are of benefit to the individuals, they're of benefit to the environment, in, in benefit to the economy. Um, and so it's sort of natural synergy with trying to get people active, trying to get people um, out of their cars, off their, f you know, on their feet um, and that sort of thing. So although we come at it from a very different angle, but actually in terms of activity and get, you know, tackling uh, obesity, tackling all, all of that sort of mental health issues, um, it, it just lines. Successes, I think, are really quite significant. Firstly, um, most significantly for me, our new corporate reorganisation as a service has got a dotted line between our culture and sports service and our public health team. So I think in many ways, without this project, that recognition of how important our service is to health may not have been recognised. I think some of the key successes have been about consolidating relationships and having a greater appreciation of each other's perspectives. So for us um, in public health, it's, it's looking at what are the win-wins with working with culture and sport and wider partners. And I think that's been a real successful journey, certainly over the last 18 months that I've been part of, of the, um, the partnership and, and the work that we've been doing. It, it's having that shared sense of accountability. If I think where we are with the Active Durham partnership now, we know it's the single best thing you can do, improve activity, to improve people's health. And I see the Active Durham partnership as being a major strand of that. It's about a shared understanding, bringing together all those different disciplines, having a common goal. Um, we'll move towards joint commissioning and everybody together tackling inactivity. We recently uh, commissioned together with Health a project called Beat the Streets and there are other projects that the Active Durham Leadership Group are looking at which really look at whole uh, solutions at scale to tackle inactivity. We're stopping people going into hospital, aren't we? People are getting fitter, you know, they're feeling better in themselves around the mental health, um, you know, and the well-being and that's what's important. I think that should drive the agenda because you want to make a difference. I think um, it's like a little acorn isn't it once you've dropped the seed it just starts to grow and I think we're still on that journey. The project's really helped us influence others at all levels and establish a much more a joined up and partnership approach because as well as the local authority being joined up it's critical that our partners in the health sector, education sector which is a wide range of partners are all batting in the same direction and, and being really keen to really tackle the challenges we have together.